how's it going? I'm Connie, thanks for stopping by. Is it possible to travel with one carry-on long-term? Yes, it is. Today, I'm gonna share with you all the tips and tricks that you need to know to travel with one carry-on. Plus, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna share with you a bonus tip that most people don't know about. If this is a topic you're interested in, give it a thumbs up so that I know and YouTube knows what you like to listen to. Also, for more information on minimalism and mindset, please subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notifications every Thursday and Sunday when I post a new video. I have traveled for two years around the world with myself, my husband, and my daughter, and all of us only had one carry-on in four seasons of weather. One time we even went from Costa Rica to Switzerland in January. I'm gonna share with you how we did all of this, plus check out this video to learn how I became a minimalist. Okay, travelers, let's get started. Tip number one, choose your luggage wisely. Your luggage is so important of what you choose. You kind of have three options, right? You have a backpack, a roller, or a duffel. Now, when we first went traveling my first year, I had a Tortuga backpack, and I'll leave the link below for you, which was great. I loved it, it was comfortable, it was lightweight. Um, and the thing I love most about it is that with a backpack, I had both hands free to like, you know, have coffee or whatever. But unfortunately, I injured my back and so I wasn't able to use my backpack. The last trip, I used a roller, it's like a hybrid roller duffel, which has worked out really well for me as well. There are a few factors that you want to consider when you're choosing your luggage. One is where are you traveling and how are you traveling? So are you traveling to Europe? Are you going to need to roll it or cross um, cobblestone roads or up big steep hills? Are you going to the jungle where you can't use rollers? Or are you gonna be metropolitan the whole time so that you are gonna have taxis and you're not gonna to have to be dragging it or hauling it anywhere? The last thing you want to consider is maximizing every inch. So something to think about if you're going with the roller option is that the bars in the back for the roller or on the bottom, however you're looking at it, um, take up space. So you want to be aware of how much space those bars and the rollers can sometimes come into or eating up precious real estate in your luggage. Also things to look out for in a backpack. A lot of times backpacks will curve at the top and at the bottom as well. And so this also eats up a lot of space. So when choosing luggage, make sure it's light, lightweight because weight counts. Make sure it's adaptable to where you're traveling and that you're optimizing your real estate. So get it as square as possible. External pockets on luggage are bonus. It's like having attic space. So try to get some that have external pockets. And if you get a backpack, make sure you get one that has the belt support because again, they do get heavy. Two, clothing. Okay, this is the main one, right? This is like the meat and potatoes of packing a carry-on. So when you start to pack, think, no matter how long you're going for, just think, I'm going to pack for one week, okay? Because ultimately, you are going to do laundry, even if it's in your hotel sink. You will be doing laundry at some point. So if you pack for a week and then just plan out your attire by mixing and matching, so choosing kind of like color schemes that you can mix and match with everything, maybe three colors tops, and also layering. Base layers are a must. So you wanna have a good base layer. If you've never tried Smart Wool, you're gonna to wanna to try that. I'll leave a link below. They're fantastic. They're lightweight, they're durable. You can wear them in hot weather, and they work as a base layer in cold weather too. If you're only packing for a week, you only need one pair of pajamas. 
We don't need a variety, just one is good. Three pairs of socks. I usually do one long, two short, one workout outfit. <laughs> Try to keep it small. You're not going to take like a big chunky pair of sweatpants and a hoodie. So very thin leggings and very thin tank top or t-shirt. Uh, for women, I usually go with three bras, a light color, a dark color, and a sports bra. Two scarves. Even if you typically don't wear scarves, you will want to pack them if you're going somewhere for a long term because they're so versatile. Not only can you use it if it's like, you know, cute and just you want to be fashionable that day, right? But you can use it as a sarong at the beach. You can use it to keep you warm if it's cold or you can just use it like as a little shawl um, or you can use it as a head wrap if you go to any of those countries that you need to cover your hair. So, so versatile. Love, love, love taking scarves. I usually do two to three pairs of pants, depending on how thick they are, two skirts and two dresses as well. I know it sounds like a lot. You can actually fit quite a bit into a carry-on. You'll be surprised. Coming back to the topic of weight. Weight is so important if you're traveling internationally. Um, domestically in the US, it's not a big deal for the weight, but they will weigh your bag. Uh, when you do an international flight. So go ahead and buy one of those little weight things to make sure that it's it's underweight and double check all of your flight information to make sure that you're not gonna go overweight. Um, we're gonna talk about some tips of how to avoid going overweight right now. Shoes. Ah, it's so hard to eliminate shoes because especially as women, we feel like we need a shoe for every occasion. So this is what I chose to do and it worked really well for me and I've done it a few times since. I have four pairs. I have a sandal. I have a dressier sandal that has maybe a little bit of a heel on it. I have a boot. It has great tread on it. And then the last shoe I wear is a everything shoe. That's what my husband and I have coined it. So this shoe, the everything shoe, is a shoe that has good tread on it. So if you're a hiker or you're walking in rugged terrain, um, it's not a tennis shoe. It's a little nicer. Mine was kind of like a hybrid uh, that was leather and had a hiking tread on it. So I could wear it with jeans and it would look great, but I could wear it hiking and I would be great as well. Coming to weight with the boot and um, you're not gonna be packing that boot, by the way, you're gonna be wearing it. This goes for the bonus tip at the end that we're almost to. How many shoes do you think you need to travel, let's say for a year? Leave a comment below and tell me what you think your best guess would be. Four toiletries. Oh, this can get ya. So we're going to go back to the first step, which is pack like you're going for a week. Pack your toiletries in the mini sizes. Okay. That's what you need. I did that except for, I think a toothpaste. Yeah. And everything else was a mini size. The reason is guys, you can buy things when you get there. The exception to the rule is medication. So any medicine that you need that are prescription, I filled for six months. It was like six or eight months that I took with me. Keep in mind, ladies, that hair dryers are usually at all hotels and Airbnbs. If you have a curling iron or a flat iron or anything like that, they do sell little mini versions on Amazon that you can get that would fit in your backpack. Five, getting everything to fit into your carry-on. All right, here we go. You can do the military roll that gets everything nice and tight, or, and you can use military roll with this, is the little compartment bags that they have that you can see here. Both are great methods. Um, I've learned that just by doing the military roll just like this, works great. I can get so many clothes into my carry-on. It's amazing. Start by putting everything that is the priority in one pile. Set aside all your toiletries, all of your shoes, and all of your coats and heavy gear. 
Begin by putting all of your shoes, except your heaviest, clunkiest shoe, leave that one out still, and pack these shoes first in the bottom of your suitcase or your bag. Then begin to fold and pack military roll or military roll and then put into the compartment into your bag. The very last thing to go in are the toiletries. They can kind of go into those side compartments or maybe even put them on the side and you can put them into your uh, personal bag that you get to take with you, like your little mini backpack or purse or whatever. Okay, here's the bonus tip. So what you have left out are all of your heavy clothes, your coats and your boots and your Levi's or jeans, anything that's really heavy. This is what you're gonna wear every travel day. <laughs> so on the day that we left Costa Rica um, and flew to Switzerland in Costa Rica, we were wearing all of our winter gear. Living intentionally can be part of your everyday life even when you're trying to travel long-term with a carry-on. I hope these tips help and that you have a fantastic trip wherever you're headed. Please share this video with someone else who's interested in minimalism and intentional living and check out these other videos and subscribe for new videos every Thursday and Sunday.